Right, 2019, next race is uh, this coming Sunday. I've raised the outriggers about 20 millimeters just to give me better clearance and then later I'll fix it to prevent them from swiveling. This time around my wiring is slightly more refined. I've joined all the front panels and connected them in parallel and they feed through this power meter that gives me power, voltage and current. They join in parallel to the panel at the back so I'm actually getting the reading in voltage for all of them but current only from the ones in front and then I've got a switch with which I can connect, disconnect the panels. From the switch I'm running a PWM speed control, just a normal uh, power trigger from the cordless drill and that goes straight to the motor. Right, first test for the day is four panels, direct coupling and uh, see how it performs in sunlight and it's actually nice that we've got some shade, it's a bit cloudy today. Um, it'd be good to see how the panels respond and how the motor loads them without full sun being available. The moment open circuit voltage is 21 volts and uh, let's see how it goes. Okay, voltage is down to 7 volts. Getting up there, 8 volts, speed 1.8 knots. So without full sun, this is clearly too much load on the panels. I'm definitely going to need some buck conversion to get the full power on these panels without full sun. I'm hearing strange noises from the motor. I hope it's not sucking water. There's a slight tide, which is not a problem because with tide you can always do a run out and back and then take the average, but the problem is the wind. The wind changes the actual force required by the motor to push the kayak at a certain speed through the water. So you'll find that going into the wind, like I'm doing now, the motor's struggling. It's running closer to its static condition. And then I'm going to turn around, get the wind from behind. No motor. Motor's gone. Well, I did in fact manage to get the motor up and running again. And I did a test with the buck converter and I did a test in full sun, but I never got more than two knots. So uh, I had to strip the motor, check what's wrong. And sure enough, it had taken on water. This looks like old rust, so it must have taken on water a long time ago. And uh, yeah, surprising that it's still operated as well as it did until it died. I've actually disassembled the motor to see if I can salvage any of the subcomponents and uh, thought it would be interesting to show you what the inside of these motors look like. I tried to remove this bulky piece of metal and tried to cut it open. I need to discover later that the best way to do is, is to compress the spring and out pops two retaining ball bearings and that allows this to just slip off. This had a really nice thrust bearing which still looks in decent condition so I should be able to use that for future projects. The bearing is a little dodgy so I'll probably replace that. 
gears are rusty but they look like they might still be good enough to clean up and use in the future. It's a reduction ratio of around 8.3 to 1. That obviously cut the housing. By the way, in case you're wondering what this ring is that you sometimes find around these motors, it's just plain steel and it acts as a retainer for the flux. It basically gives the magnetic flux a return path, giving you a, giving you a uh, stronger flux on the inside of the motor. Nothing to salvage there. And the magnets are still nice and strong. There you go. So yes, this uh, shaft with the sun gear and the gearbox could still be quite useful for future projects. It's a nice compact design, just one stage of planetary gears. I'll cut this short, put a small brushless motor behind this and uh, that should make a nice compact design for an underwater trolling motor.